first of all, thank you so much for the invitation, Frederick. I really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, as you said, my name is Stepan. I go by Stefan. I was born and raised in Croatia. I lived in Denmark for 10 years. And then um, ever since um, uh, earlier this year, so earlier 2025, I have been uh, in uh, Los Angeles. So this is, has, has been now, what, seven, eight months. So I'm a business owner. I like The first company I started, it's called uh, AI in Architecture Engineering Construction, so AI and AC. And that one, um, like I got a lot of clients around the world and uh, primarily from the USA. And that was the main reason for moving here. I wanted to be closer to my clients. So a year and a half ago, I would, ne would have never imagined to live the life I live today. And especially being invited on such podcasts, because a year and a half ago, I was still working a normal job as an architect, as a BIM lead until I was laid off a year and a half. I got more than 700 clients from 67 countries around the world. Only in the long run, when you look back, the dots connect. It all makes sense. But in the moment, it feels yeah. like the worst th possible thing that could have, uh, could have happened. Uh, but yeah, I think that this was, uh, especially for people like, you know, that um, like easily fall in love with something like I, I do. <laughs> so I, I fell in love with like being a BIM lead and I loved that job. I would, would, wouldn't have left it. You know, I was like, I was not supposed to be a business owner, especially not have two businesses right now. Uh, but yeah, I think this yeah. is uh, something I wanted to, to share. My story, because like I got inspired by my parents, by my father, primarily, he's a civil engineer. And I just remember like, because I was a kid and uh, he had a like AutoCAD 3D. And I remember like he was just showing some lines in 3D and I immediately fell in love. I was like, wow, this is cool. You can like, because you know, one of the main things that uh, people would like to, to be able to do, like superpowers, is the ability to fly. And I just felt like, oh my God, I can fly and see the house and the city and I don't know what. So that was like a cool thing when I was a kid. I was, I had an internship uh, because that's kind of a part of the program. And I went for like six months, nine months. I, I worked in Turkey on a construction site. And I noticed that everybody comes to me for technology questions. And I'm actually really good at like, you know, understanding it, explaining it, teaching it and so on and so forth. And then I asked, like, you know, I had some people that led there like as mentors and they told me you should double down on this. You should double down. You're really good at this. So mm -hmm. that's how I got into BIM. And, um, yeah, so I worked at, uh, Sweco, Swedish consultants. Uh, mm -hmm. that's like the largest engineering uh, consultant firm in Europe. I think it's around 22,000 people right now. And I worked there as a BIM coordinator. I did structures, MEP, ventilation, electrical stuff. Um, and after that, like after I got a, <laughs> a kind of, you know, I kind of realized, okay, this is it. I, I understood that everything. I learned everything. Let me try some, a new challenge. So I got to uh, big. So I started a business um, in early 2024 um, that offers AI courses, AI workshops, teaching architects and engineers how to implement AI. Because something I did as like my background is within the last three years, I created the world's largest database of AI tools for the AEC industry. 700 applications right now. And I, you know, people think that ah, there's only chat GPT. I'm like, there's thousands more literally. Um, so they, yeah, so people come to me for questions right now. And I, I, yeah, I made courses, they sold really well. And then the other company I'm running right now, it's called Neostack. And that company is mainly focused on helping AEC firms understand their technology footprint. Because we realized, like my co-founder and I um, met on this journey of me running my own company. And then um, we realized that none of the companies we speak with actually has any idea of how much technology they're using, how many apps, how many licenses, yeah. how much does it cost them. And people just because everybody in the AC optimizes for selling time and money, you know, um, not on time and materials, sorry, but doesn't optimize for selling technology. I mean, probably by, by seeing all of these uh, AI demo days that you say that you, you watch, probably you know by now that I'm, I'm quite, I mean, religious, you know, so I, I believe that, you know, God has a plan for everybody on this planet, including mm -hmm. myself. And I think that God was just like trying to tell me that I was born for something more than a normal job, because you wouldn't have invited me on this show. You wouldn't have known about me. I wouldn't have been doing the things I'm, I'm doing right now, haven't it been for that layoff. So, and the same for you, like we wouldn't have ever met. I would have no idea who Predrag is. 
they're like, ah, if he made it to America, he must be good. So let's hire him. And I was like, I spent so many years in Europe when nobody said yes to working with me because I was young. I was like, you know, ah, they didn't, I, don't, I don't know why. I actually don't know why, because nobody tells you why they, they want to work with you. <laughs> like, the key difference between America and Europe when it comes to BIM, AI and technology is just that there's a lot more money here and people aren't stressed about paying for an extra license of Revit and paying for new software and paying for this. It's not that big of an issue. Whereas in Europe, everything's like really calculated. Everything's like estimated. Everybody, you know, even like budgeting it project managers. Europe. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, costs are a lot more like day to day uh, life in Europe than in, in the States. Of course, everybody thinks of money here too. Um, as you know, this is like a money driven market. But it's, uh, yeah, it, there's a lot more of it, I think, here. Thank you so much. Now I feel that the pedestal is super high. Um, I think that, you know, uh, it's going to make a lot more sense for people, uh, if they want to learn more, to either go to on my LinkedIn um, or YouTube and then see these demo days that you, you were speaking about as well. Because I think this is where I perform, I mean, best. This is what I feel that I was born to do, you know, like educate people and help people move forward with technology in this industry. Um, but for now, like what I can share is like maybe a couple of examples of like, what, it, what problems am I working on right now and how can it, this be relevant for people, um, from both companies. So as I've said, the first company, ANAC, um, that produces like courses and, uh, workshops and so on. It's so fun, man. Like, you know, because I, I get invited all over the world, either for workshops and I get, have students from all, all, all over the world. And it's just so great to see like their testimonials, you know, like their feedback telling you or like, you know, that this course was probably the best investment that they ever made or that, you know, they thought they knew, for example, how to use chat GPT, but they realized they were using it in beginner mode and things and, and, and so on and so forth, you know? Um, so this, this was, this is very, very gratifying to, to see this, uh, to see, hear this feedback. And again, the, the main goal of my courses is to help people save time. That's the main goal. Um, I have reports of like, you know, that if you learn how to use AI properly on many use cases, um, you can save more than 12 hours a week. And this is what the course teaches you how to do it, but it's, it doesn't stop with only personal productivity. It also goes on to AI implementation. And this is something I also help like larger companies with where it's like, okay, I have 2000 employees in my firm. How do I go about this? You know, so because not everybody's the same, you know, I guess people like yeah. yourself or people listening to this, they're open to technology. They're going to learn about it regardless, you know, um, but it's, it's the majority, like, how do you move the critical mass of people? That's the question. Um, well, yeah, that's uh, like, that's the first business, but it's more of a service business. You can call it because like I produce the courses, I produce, uh, you know, the workshops, uh, but the second business, I think it's, it's more working on like bigger problems of all of this, as I might have alluded to earlier in the show. It's um, so it's called Neostack and you, you people can learn more about us on Neostack.ai. And the problem that we solve is that, you know, we looked at many studies that suggest that 30 to 50% of software is actually unused mm -hmm. because companies overbuy software in all of the cases. And this, this leads to an annual waste of $34 billion in the US and the UK combined. Just like wasted money that goes to nowhere, right? Uh, I mean, it goes to these software companies, but um, it's not yeah. really optimal for <laughs> AEC businesses, you know, like you're spending money on something you're not even using. So the goal of Neostack is to help them optimize that, to help them cut those costs. Uh, because what we do is we help you find the best tool for you we help you manage all of your tools, uh, track licenses, track their cost, and then even adopt the tools. Because what, what we realized is that also <laughs> what, what firms, when they implement, you know, um, a, a tool, when they choose a tool, uh, within, the 18, within the first 18 months, uh, around 40% of mid-market companies abandon the tool of use. Mm. <laughs> because it's, it's just that it doesn't align with their business workflows. It doesn't like it. It's, it's hard to learn it. So this is also another problem we're trying to, to tackle with Neostack. Um, and I think that, you know, we had some really good um, either like first founding design partners. This is the stage we're at now. So what this means is that we are launching the beta soon. And one beta, once beta is up, we're working toward our, you know, first 
MVP, so to speak, uh, to be launched in like 1st of February or 1st of March next year. And, or 2026, right? And that's the goal. We have like more than 200 companies that signed up on the wait list. Uh, many of these companies reached out even earlier. They want to uh, like help us either with finances or with testing and feedback. And, uh, you know, all of these companies understand that giving us a bit of money right now to help us develop this uh, as we're doing it anyway, you know, being fully bootstrapped for now, where like we put our own money, my co-founder and I put our own money behind this and develop this. Um, they understand that giving us a bit more money right now can save them thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. in the long run. So, um, so yeah, I think that that's uh, what I can share for the, what we're doing. And I think that, you know, if people want to learn more, go to my LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm harder to catch, I would say, because especially with all the emails I need to get back to and all the companies and, and, and so on. But yeah, I, I pretty easy to find. So, um, you know, yeah, I think that that's what I wanted to share.